definitely encouraging everyone. Do you want to say something, Chuck? No, I'm fine. You're doing you're doing very well. Glad to hear that. Okay, and I understand that Tom Knight is uh, back out uh, working the city hall area. And Tom, if you're out there, hey, go ahead and take it away. I don't know if working is exactly the right word for this. I we're hot right now. Oh, they are. Okay, so it is cold out here, man. <laughs> it's you. anything but hot out here. I mean to tell you. So, this, by the way, just in case you're wondering, we call him the voice of Channel Two. He's uh -huh. a fan. <laughs> Tom Morales. Oh, bring that up. Oh well, hey, affectionately known as Chief to most of us are around around the station. But the main reason that uh, we're here and he's here and we're and it's anything but uh, but hot out here at City Hall. They basically shut down. All the activities that were going on out here at City Hall have closed for the evening. But we're going to stick around here because we've still got an hour or so to go on the uh, carrying and sharing telethon. Uh, we want you to try and help us help the Northland Family Help Center. Now, there were a lot of people here earlier watching the tree, and people still drift by from time to time to look at the tree, and we were here for the lighting ceremony. And you can come on by and say hi to us. Matter of fact, please come on by and say hi to us. It's kind of lonely out here right now. There's no one out here right now, and I'd like to see a couple of people stop by and just say, hey, how's yeah. it going? So it would be kind of fun. You can you can see the live, the live unit, and this is the first time we've ever done this. I don't know. You know, I think maybe next year we might want to... <laughs> I want studio assignment next year. That's all there is to it. Somebody else can go out here and do this. In any case, um, the Christmas tree is uh, a very nice and, and beautiful symbol of this time of year. But unfortunately, uh, a lot of people don't deal with the holidays as well as you might think they should or might. There's an awful lot of depression that goes out there. And some of the depression gets translated, unfortunately, into domestic abuse and sometimes child abuse and things like that. The Northland Family Help Center is there to try and prevent some of that, or if it does happen, to try and help, at least help, repair some of the damage that's been done to uh, some, uh, probably some people who, you know, obviously didn't deserve that. Nobody deserves that kind of treatment. So what we'd like you to do is we're going to try and help them out by... Uh, collecting non-perishable food and clothing and uh, we really are trying to put an emphasis here on gifts for teenagers this year because a lot of times they kind of get left out in the mix and we're taking your donations now you can bring the cash down here but there isn't anybody down here right now bringing us anything <clears throat> but uh, if you want to do that that's fine or uh, probably a lot easier just pick up the telephone and call 526-2232 their operators standing by or sitting down right now uh, who are ready willing and able to take those donations cash check visa or mastercard by all means give them a call and uh, let them know that you care right it only takes a few minutes all you have to do is go up and uh, get up and go over walk the telephone and then you can sit back and enjoy the rest of the telephone we've got about an hour to go but the math doesn't work out quite right we're at 5400 but we're two which is one quarter of the way our goal is we're way, still but probably ways away yeah, from our goal. one quarter of the way to it but we're two-thirds through the telethon so we're really going to have to make up some lost grounds here in uh the next hour but that's still enough time to make our goal of twenty thousand. they're telling us that we're tossing to nick and shelly Oh, are, is that, is that, you want me guys to, you guys want me to shut up? Is that what I hear? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Nick and Shelly, you guys can have it. Go ahead. Take it away. Actually, just Shelly this time, but uh, we're getting closer and closer. We had the Sonawa High School Jazz Band here uh, for the first couple of hours, and they were kind enough to entertain us. I understand, though, that we haven't seen anything yet. We now have the Flagstaff, Flagstaff High School Corollaires, and they're here to do some uh, Christmas. Some great gifts. Gifts they can watch, gifts they can listen to, gifts that don't come with a lot of hot air. Like this 8mm camcorder, just $2.99. Plus, get no payments and no interest for six months on everything. This holiday season, skip the hassle. Go to Best Buy, where great gifts come easy. She was named in the spirit of the holiday, but we don't know if this little whale will be around for Christmas. Rescue workers near Miami struggled all night long to try and keep the whale nicknamed Noel alive. Noel got stranded in shallow waters and could die if she doesn't make it into deeper water soon. And now on to a little happier animal story for you. A pack of professional pups are hard at work in Flagstaff, getting ready for a season of competition. The Arizona mountain mushers are taking advantage of a full training season to unleash their full potential. These dogs may look pretty laid back right now, but don't let their calm demeanor fool you. These aren't just any dogs. These are trained professionals. In other words, sled dogs. And when it's time to get down to business, stand back. Oh, Wally, you ready? These dogs and their human companions, or mushers, 
start their training season in September and go until about May or until it gets too warm. Denise Edwards became a musher about seven years ago. She says she's as crazy about the sport as her dogs are. It's, it's so addicting that once you get into it, it's you just have to keep doing it, you know? Denise says because they spend so much time together, fellow mushers and their dogs form a sort of extended family. She says the care and training brings owners and dogs together as a team. Musher Barbara Hoop agrees. Being out, the bond with your dog, uh, the running, it's just a thrill. It's great. It takes more than training to make a good dog sled team. Barbara says a lot of care and love go into feeding her dogs. We use quite a quite high protein diet. Uh, I feed quite a bit of meat because all my animals have wolf in them. And they do better with meat because their enzyme system is different than, than that of a dog. And a great time to uh, see all the sled dogs in action is February when there are plenty of races as part of Flagstaff's popular winter fest. And, uh, Kath, how do you call one of those dogs? <laughs> Mush. Mush? Mushers. You're sure not maybe... <laughs> I think I said moosh. I think that was the original pronunciation. You know, every once in a while, the California in me comes out. And we want to thank Randy for doing the interpretation for us there. That's Thanks, Randy. I think we've created a whole new word there. Yes, indeed. Moosh. Well, <laughs> while they're waiting for more mush in Flagstaff, it's a different story in the Northwest. Yeah, I'll tell you what. They